画面と。Genesis said, "Kiss is very cute." Hey, Genesis, where's your friend Super Nintendo? Ha <laughs> ha! I'm on today. I'm on today. Franklin Genesis said, "No." Hey, Frontline Genesis, where'd you come from? Old Testament. Franklin Genesis said, "Are you playing B Man G?" Uh, yeah, I will be、uh, after class today. After class, after class. Franklin Genesis said, "Oh, we're gonna have a short class, just thirty minutes, and then we、we'll、get to the game. Maybe I'll order a pizza. You guys like pizza? I know I like pizza. Every once in a while." Some jaw problems, so probably just、uh, stick with the、uh, ice cream today. Said, help Mr. G with a donation through Stream Elements. HTTPS colon slash slash Stream Elements dot com slash MRG underscore live slash tip. Franklin Genesis said, it's twelve o six a.m. So I had a coffee.、Oh, okay. Stream Elements. Set. One pm. Here. Let me see what I get. This peach is in my my teaching chair. Franklin Genesis said, "It's eight full fours for me." Well, this class will be right up your alley, then. Franklin Genesis said, "Nightbot said, you can send Mr. G, Moses, and Keanu packages to 1117 Olu Avenue, PO Box 37305, Honolulu, Hawaii 96823." Franklin Genesis said, you talk too much at Nightbot."
Prolingenesis said, at MRG underscore live I just ordered a portable Wi-Fi router thinking about doing some IRL streams. Hopefully it gives me better quality streams. Genesis said, if it doesn't, I am sending it right back. MRSJ the mermaid hey, Mr. said, J. MRG Lipkeanu and Maglid Moses MRG LIVG. Mr. J, awesome, thanks for stopping in. I know uh, you're busy, so I appreciate you able to make it to the class here. So, how about, uh, how about some Mr. G theme song? Everybody's favorite. Let's rock that Mr. G song, Google. Hey, Google. From Lynn What's my name? Said. Your name is Lynn. At MRG underscore live. Did you do your website? MRSJ the mermaid. Said. Uh, I, I did part of it. A friend helped me with that. Shit, the time. Peach in my chair. Meow said, New content king. Angry kitty meow said, 
New Content King, New Content King, New Content King. Thank you. Angry and, Kitty Meow. And if you subscribe Set. to the channel, New King. you get to use a Keanu emoji anywhere on Twitch. Why, Keanu? Look, I got a more of a long call. I'm going to go cut a what? I'm going to go cut a car. 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 I'm Marjorie, live Keanu, Marjorie, live Keanu, Marjorie, live Keanu. I love you, Mr. Jack. Hey, hi, Lonnie, for me. We're good caddies. I'm with my daddy here, Mr. J. We and me and my Nine girlfriend, Peachy. Said, help Mr. G with a donation through streamelements, https colon slash slash streamelements.com slash mrg's slash tip. So, hi, guys. All right, special shout out to Lita. She sent me this awesome apron. Says uh, bare naked chef. So uh, I'm looking forward to using this with a lot less clothes because you know it's very hot with the studio lights here in Hawaii. But yeah, thank you, Alita. Special shout out. Mars J, the mermaid. Said L U L. All right, yeah, I'll be able to wear that with less clothes, which is nice because it's hot. So today uh, we have a great lesson planned today. Today we're going to be learning about the great state of Oregon. And, uh, you know, we went, uh, the only East Coast state we have left is uh, Florida. Everything east of the Mississippi is, is done. Um, and the West Coast states we have is Oregon, Washington, and California. Uh, we'll do Oregon today. We'll do Washington on Friday. We're having a special guest in Friday's class. Uh, JR, also known as John Reeves, uh, is going to join Set. us. Hey, Bella. Hi, Mr. G. Hot Keanu. Hey, Bella. Stream Aloha elements. so much Set. to see you. Thank you so much he matches here, Pog Champ, uh, out, for stopping into the class. Slash merch and uh, slash thank you for the, uh, live. For, for the, the uh, last the class, too. Said. Hi there, Bella. Thank you for yesterday's stream. Uh, I, I, I didn't get that donation. I had to turn down the TTS because of, you know, uh, harassment and whatnot. But when I saw later words that, that there was a uh, donation, so I really do appreciate that. Uh, especially this time, tax time in Hawaii, it's really tough for everybody because uh, it's kind of like a surprise bill uh, that everybody has to pay. Uh, Hawaii is the highest income tax in the United States. Thank you so much, Bella. Bella with the 1,000 bits cheer. That's a weird sound that it makes. I don't, I don't know why that's new, that sound. But uh, thank you so much for that donation. That was from carried over from uh, yesterday's uh, stream. We didn't have class yesterday. We only have class on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Today's Wednesday. And normally they're a little bit earlier. It's about 1 p.m. in Hawaii right now. I normally like to try to start class a little earlier, uh, like 12 o'clock Hawaii time. But like I said, uh, we're learning about the great state of Oregon today. Uh, we're not going to do a full slideshow because uh, whatever, for whatever reason, I don't know if it's the new technology or Twitch itself, it always seems to uh, cut off. Alexander School Smiles said, Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, I got the bell. Party Papa. Thank you so much, Bella. Hello, Papa. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, we do this live on Twitch, and then the replay is on YouTube. Uh, like I said, we're not going to have a full uh, slideshow today, but I do have a lot of slides like the one that you have here. And then I uh, prepared an extra long uh, speaking lecture. So uh, we're still going to have the same. Uh, we only have a few states left. You know, we have Oregon smiles. today, Washington. Dead. Hi, Mrs. J. We have uh, Florida, Texas, and Dead. California. Electrulia Queen. And then uh, we have uh, we, Alaska and Hawaii. So the three most populous states in the United States are Texas, California, and Florida. So I think those will be um, all next week. Uh, Monday we'll do Texas, Tuesday we'll do Florida, and Wednesday, I mean, excuse me, Monday we'll do Texas, Wednesday we'll do Florida, and Friday we'll do uh, California. Because once again, classes are Monday, Wednesday, Friday. The following week after that, two weeks from today, We'll do Alaska and Hawaii, and uh, we'll have one extra day that week so you guys can choose what we do on Friday. So yeah, we only have a few more states left. Uh, I can't believe we've, we've covered almost all of the states. Said. 
Hi, Angry Kitty. Hi, Angry Kitty. So, have you guys ever been to uh, Oregon? Uh, one thing that I know, remember about Oregon, I, I'll, I'm going to be saying some stories today because I did live in Oregon and I did live in Vancouver, Washington, uh, which is over, over in the Oregon metro, which is in the Portland metro area. So Vancouver, Washington, aka Vantucky, I lived there for too long, eight months I think, and I also lived in Portland for probably six months too, uh, before I moved to Hawaii. Uh, but yeah, I have some few interesting stories about that part of the country. Um, it's also in my second book, uh, which I'm working on right now, um, which will be coming out uh, early next year. Uh, there is a chapter uh, on, there's a couple different chapters on Portland, Oregon area. There's a chapter on Vancouver called Vantucky. Uh, there's a chapter on Portland called The Serial Squatters of Portland, Oregon. Uh, but yeah, those are my second book, but the point is, uh, I've been there and I've, I, I know a lot about Portland. I didn't just go there as a tourist for three days and four nights. I went there and I lived in houses, apartments, or on the streets there, or camped out there. Uh, Portland, Oregon has uh, the largest public park in the United States called Forest Park. And me and my twin brother, MCATS, we actually camped in that park. Uh, we camped in Forest Park and then we would walk to downtown Portland every day. Get this, we camped there with a cat too. Yes, Fuzz the cat. This was called the Summer of Fuzz. And during the Summer of Fuzz, uh, we traveled with this cat, Fuzz, across the United States. Said. You can send Mr. G. Most At one point, we were in Portland, Oregon, and uh, we camped in this, uh, this forest park area. Uh, but Burgerville, what I have on the uh, screen here, this is a, a burger chain that's pot, it, 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 only in Oregon, from what I know. Uh, Texas has Waterburger. So Texas has Waterburger, uh, which is a really good burger place in Texas. That's awesome. Uh, Texas has a uh, water burger, which is a really popular burger chain in uh, Texas and Oregon has Burgerville, which is a very popular burger chain in Oregon. Another reason why I know so much about Oregon is because while I was there, I, I, had, I wor worked a full time job at a company called R Oregon. Uh, this was in 2012. And what my job was, was to register people to vote. So they would send me uh, to a different uh, section of Oregon, uh, generally in the I-5 Portland metro area. So basically, uh, we'll, we'll get to some facts about Oregon here too. They create the other sound that sound following. I create love. Said. Hey. U-E-P-I-C-C-C-C-C-C. So, uh, that Burgerville, they do have good burgers. They're not that good. They're pretty cheap. The thing that they sell so much is the sauce. Uh, they're really good at burger sauce. But this right here is a, a famous Portland uh, landmark, and the address is 11... No, no, no. I remember Burnside Avenue, yes. You'll find this Portland, Oregon thing off of Burnside Avenue, because one day, me and MCATS, uh, we had an adventure at Burnside Avenue. Uh, well, I cannot tell you what we did. But, uh, but it's really... You gotta, it's not, I wouldn't recommend going to downtown Portland, especially now. I mean, turn on the news. It's like been a riot there and riots and looting and fires every night. However, uh, during this time, and me and my brother were both grown tall men, uh, you know, or he's not as tall as me, but anyways, we're, we're less likely to be preyed upon. Uh, but but poor, downtown Portland is something else. Their logo is Keep Portland Weird. And uh, they, Portland is definitely weird, especially the downtown area. Now, I keep on trailing off from what I was talking about, so let's go over some basic uh, facts about the state of Oregon, okay? So, I'll stand on my... Oh, Pete, you're in my seat. Looks like I can't stand. Hey, this. That's why I sit. I mean, that's why I stand and teach the class. I'm liable. You in the upper? All right. Okay, so Peach is napping. All right, so uh, about Oregon. Uh, the capital of Oregon is Salem, Oregon. She's going through another growth spurt. Help Mr. G with a donation through Stream Elements. HTTPS code so This is a very expensive water bottle. I apologize, I'm not at 
I've been having an issue with my tooth. I'm not gonna lie. And even though it's not really painful, it's like hurting my whole mouth and making my whole mouth just feel like dirty and bad. I know it sounds weird, but it's like there's infection in my mouth. <sighs> MRSJ the mermaid said, Oh no sad face, I was hoping it was better. It's okay. Hopefully it just will last a couple more days and it'll go away. But um the show goes on. And it's the first class in about a week or so, so uh you know I could have had more classes. I, I know how to t to handle pain. Um you know, but it's just so annoying the pain. But anyways, uh, let's keep it going. Uh, so the logo uh, to the, the uh, motto of Portland is keep Portland weird. Portland is in the capital of Oregon. Salem, Oregon is the capital. Uh, Salem is known for its art museums. Um, I think it's uh, the Haley Ford Art Museum. It's one of the uh, nation's top, <clears throat> excuse me, I just spit. Uh, it's one of the nation's top progressive and abstract art museums. Uh, Portland in general um, does have a really strong art, music, theater. Uh, there's a lot of microbreweries, coffee shops on every corner. It's not a bad place. Uh, Voodoo Donuts is one of the most famous donut places. I'll show you a picture of that. I'll just show you a picture right now. Huh? So Voodoo Donuts, if you're ever in downtown Portland, you'll see uh, people carrying these pink boxes of uh, strange donuts. And as you can see in the uh, corner here, sorry, over here. Oh, where is it? So, uh, you see these, they got these pink boxes, these are Voodoo Donuts, they're known for their, uh, their outrageous donut flavors, like with Cheetos and Fruit Loops on top. Um, I've had them a couple times. Um, you know, actually, uh, the, uh, there's, there's homeless people everywhere in Portland. Uh, they're, they're even more than Hawaii. You know, Hawaii and Portland uh, both have huge homeless populations in the city center areas. Another uh, thing that Hawaii has in common with Portland it, it, with Oregon is there's a huge crater, a Diamond Head Crater in Honolulu, right in the city center. And also Crater Lake is located in Oregon. Uh, crater Lake is the deepest lake in the United States and is the uh, remnant of a dormant volcano. <clears throat> okay, uh, continuing on. What was I talking about before Crater Lake? Well, anyways, oh, there's a lot of homeless there. Yes, uh, the Blanchett House. So. Uh, I actually never stood in line uh, for Voodoo Donuts because there's always a line. Uh, here's a picture of the uh, line for Voodoo Donuts. And, uh, you know, I, I wasn't going to stand in line. But uh, while me and Michael were living in uh, Portland, Oregon area, we knew nothing about Portland. I went there because he suggested it. And uh, we found, and we had a camp area. We found a little camp area um, out here in Forest Park. This is an example. This is a picture from Forest Park. This is a, a hippie in Forest Park. All right, I don't know that guy, thank God. He wasn't there when we were camping. But me, my brother, and a little cat named Fuzz, we camped out in Forest Park uh, one night. RSJ, the mermaid. Well, two nights, actually. Set. Pretty park. Yeah, it's a beautiful park. Uh, and it's so green because they have so much rain. It rains like 10 months a year there. And it's usually cold rain, not like in Hawaii. But uh, it's a beautiful park. It's the largest park, public park in the United States. And for me and Michael, we were able to walk to downtown Portland and back. But we had to walk down this narrow, narrow street where we're lucky we didn't get killed. We would leave Fuzz in the park, but Fuzz didn't like the park because there's so many wildlife there. Uh, there was coyotes. There were wolves. Uh, you could hear the coyotes at night yelping. Uh, this, for the first camp area that I'm describing now, it was didn't have as many coyotes as the one that we ended up going to uh, a few months later. But uh, when we first arrived in Portland, uh, we made a camp area in Forest Park, and one morning Michael woke up, uh, MCATS woke up to a huge moose by his tent, by our tent, and I didn't believe him. I'm like, no way would there be a moose out all the way here close to downtown Portland. And then the next day I woke up and I saw it myself, a huge hey, moose. Said. You can send Mr. G. But Most looking back and doing some more research, it may not have been a moose, but an elk. Because a moose is actually as big as a car, right? And an elk is like a size down from a moose. Like the moose is the extra large. 
the elk is the large, and then the bighorn deer is the medium, right? But when you're out there in the wilderness, you wake up and you see an animal, an elk is a huge, it may not be as big as a vehicle, but it's huge. And, uh, well, I, I, well, I guess what I saw, I just rubbed my eyes, I'm like, dinosaur? Like, because I just saw this huge beast, like, just, just munching right in front of me. But, uh, but yeah, he was just checking us out, just wondering what was going on. So there's lots of woods in Oregon. I'm going to keep, I want to keep on, uh, on topic here. Uh, so there's lots of woods in Oregon, if you can imagine uh, lumber and the forestry. Wood products are one of its top industries. Uh, they also have a strong agricultural, uh, unlike on the east coast at the same latitudes, because uh, it's too cold out there, right? Uh, but on the west coast, of, like Oregon, which has a beautiful coastline, one of the most beautiful coastlines in the United States is in Oregon. Um, but they also have really strong agricultural products. Uh, some of the um, agricultural uh, products that come from Oregon is wine. Uh, it's on the top of the list. They're one of the top uh, wine producers in the United States. And also uh, Oregon wine is sent off to different places around the world as well. Uh, hops grows really well there. Milk, eggs, dairy, uh, berries. Um, during a course of time living there, me and Michael, uh, we lived off of blackberries because uh, wherever, wherever we camped in the woods, there seemed to be berry bushes. We're like, hey, the weather sucks, but at least there's berries everywhere, right? <laughs> Who doesn't like to smoke some Oregon Bud and drink some and eat some blackberries, right? Uh, unlimited amount of berries, a berry buffet, right? Blackberries galore. Uh, apples grow really well in that climate. They grow better in Washington, I guess, but they grow good in Oregon. Uh, sweet corn, peppermint grows wild there. Uh, peppermint's, uh, you know, uh, really smells really and tastes really good. Uh, pears, uh, cherries, uh, they're the top pr producer of uh, maraschino cherries in Oregon. Uh, oh, they're actually vented, invented there as well. Onions grow good there. Um, I said wine. Oh, rest, Jay, the mermaid. You Set. guys heard of Tillamook cheese? I picked blackberries along the Oregon Puget Sound young. Yeah? I know, it's a fun thing to do uh, ever in your life. MRS Jay the Mermaid. This is another uh, image of Forest Park. This, oh, in Washington. This is another image of Forest Park right here. And uh, put something else up. And uh, I said uh, Keep off Portland Weird is its logo. That's the, that's the logo for Austin too. It's Keep Austin Weird, but Portland's also Keep Portland Weird. And Vancouver, which is located uh, just on the other side of the Columbia River, um, is, 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 they're, they're known as Keep Vancouver Normal. Because like Portland's keep Portland weird, keep Vancouver normal. So I, like I said, I lived in Vancouver for about eight months. Um, <clears throat> what else? Uh, Nike uh, is originated. I, I didn't even get any Nike pictures. I should have got a, a Nike. A uh, Tillamook cheese comes from Oregon. Uh, some inventions that came from Oregon. So we mentioned the cherries. Uh, the computer mouse was invented in Oregon. Uh, Nike started in Oregon. Uh, you know, Oregon was the only. Uh, was the, was the site of the only casualties on American soil uh, on the mainland, on American mainland soil during World War II. Yes, I do have an image for that. Um, the Japanese, they sent out hey, a uh, fleet of balloons. Send. Hey, Big Boss. Oh, no, that's Nightbot. <laughs> so, slash 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 so uh, right above the Japanese flag here, uh, the Japanese, actually, they sent out a, 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 a fleet of, there's a Japanese flag, uh, they sent out a, a fleet of balloons to the west coast of the United States, uh, you know, as you can see in this little diagram, I'll, I'll make it larger in a second here, um, but they were hoping that they would uh, fly the balloons over uh, urban areas and they would explode and, and kill people. Like, why? Why would you even want to do that? But anyways, it's war, right? Uh, so they were not unsuccessful. Hundreds of them, they sent off hundreds of the balloons. The majority of them fell into the ocean. Uh, one balloon landed in a park on the Oregon coast, and it unfortunately um, was found by some children uh, who thought it was a toy and uh, blew themselves up. So that was very, very tragic, but that was the only, uh, the only result of... Um, uh, that happened. So this is Voodoo Donuts. Just want to give you guys a clear look at the Voodoo Donuts right there. I mean, I, I mean, I've had them before, 
you know, but I, I've never waited in line for them. A lot of people wait in line for them, but I'm not going to wait in line. All right, if you guys are wondering about me, uh, my name is Gregory Brandt. Uh, if you want to know more about me, if you're watching this on YouTube in particular, you know who I am. You want to know about my background, you can check out the website, gxnetwork.live. And that shows uh, my resume and some different things about me. Uh, it's on the screen right there. Also, if you want to check me out on Twitter, um, at Gregory Brandt, or on Instagram, at uh, Gregory Joseph Brandt. You can also get links for all that at the main website, gxnetwork.live. All right. Now, uh, continuing uh, with story time, too. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about the... Uh, <sighs> Well, I'm telling you about like downtown Portland and Voodoo Donuts. So I'll tell you where I ate Voodoo Donuts. There's a place in downtown Portland called the Blanchett House. Now, every city and every town in America now, they have homeless people. It's, 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 it's stigmatized, right? Some people are like, oh, no, like, like part of me is like, oh, no, don't bring that up. Don't, don't bring up because that's what, that's what something stigmatized is. You don't want to bring it up. But let's face the facts. And knowledge is power, right? Uh, relinquish the ego, right? Okay, the thing about uh, uh, homelessness in the United States, there's about 500 to 600,000 that we know about uh, homeless in the United States, sleeping outside, unsheltered homeless. That's a lot of people. That's more than half a million people are living in tents. So we can't just rush to judgment about all of them and point fingers at all of them. And that's not what I'm doing here, but I will give you some helpful information. So. Uh, there's free meals in every uh, city and, and town in the United States. Now, I'm not going to lie, I, I, I've never uh, stayed at a shelter. I would rather um, sleep outside if I was in that position. Uh, but me and my brother have taken it when we were traveling across the country with a cat named Fuzz. Uh, we did go to homeless meals and soup kitchens and take advantage of them. And some places like uh, Reno, Nevada, you know, they'll give you a scoop of rice and a, a scoop of slop, right? You know, every city is different. Portland, with its very nature, regardless, whatever the politics are, Portland, uh, they have the best uh, homeless meals of anywhere in the United States. And maybe that's why they have so many homeless people here, in, I mean, in Portland. Uh, there's a place called the Blanchett House, right? And the Blanchett House is up there with a, a, a moderately priced restaurant. Yeah, much better than any fast food, much better than basically a lot of the food that you can have at your home. And everybody there is real respectful. You go to a homeless meal here in Hawaii, you go to IHS down the street, a very corrupt place. Hey, what's up, Adam Smith? Said. Stop, Greg. What's up, Adam Smith? So if you go to a place here in Hawaii for, for a free meal, you're lucky. Like, sometimes they'll give you crap. They'll give you an uncooked hot dog and some cold beans, right? Because they can, you know, because they're also really corrupt, too, even though they get lots of donations. And, and, on, and, and I'm not going to hide that. Hawaii's Six. got some of the most yeah, corruption in the world. Smith underscore 666. I could show you half a dozen stories of corruption just from the uh, coronavirus um, financial impact. That, that, that people, have, uh, Hawaii officials have been arrested on for their corruption. Smith, Hawaii, Six, other than Chicago, are the two most corrupt Set. governments, three, police K, officers in the United States. There's no getting around it. But... Um, so yeah, somewhere like Hawaii, you're lucky to get uh, some rain, some rice and a hot dog. But there's the place, the Blanchett House in Portland, Oregon. I'll put a picture of it right here. Um, it's just like a basic restaurant, and uh, except you know that has a line. It is a popular place, but they sh serve three meals a day, 365 days a year. That's why I say, uh, you know, people talk about food insecurity in the United States. I don't know, man. Uh, it's really hard to starve in this country. Because there's plenty of options. I don't think there aren't very many adults that are starving in the United States. Sometimes there's cases of neglect where kids are not fed enough, which is horrible, right? But it's really hard for uh, a grown adult that doesn't that doesn't have mental problems. Sometimes uh, people have mental problems, which keeps them from eating as well, which is also very sad. But it's very hard for just an able-bodied human in the United States to die of starvation. You have many options. Uh, there's food stamps, there's soup kitchens, um, there's fruit growing everywhere in some places, you know. Uh, not to mention the thing called work, right? So it's really hard to uh, um, starve in the United States. But uh, this place in the corner here, Blanchett House, um, I, I ate there many times. The last place I ate on the mainland was 
one of the last places was at this Blanchett House. And you go there um, up to three, uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and you can even get in line twice and stuff. And then, as you can see in the line here, I'll make it larger. Uh, you know, the line does go around the block three times a day, but they're extremely efficient and uh, people are, are given food. You're, you're immediately sat down at a table. Uh, there's like three people per table and you have a waiter comes up, fills up your water, or fills up your juice and brings you a hot plate of food right away. And it's usually diner quality food, you know, roast beef, potatoes and vegetables. But it really, you know, it's really great feeling to, to you know, be out. It rains, like I said, 10 months a year in Portland. So you're standing in the cold rain and then you get to come inside, you sit down, you eat a warm meal. And uh, there's something that's, uh, that goes with uh, breaking bread with your fellow human beings. Um, I can't really uh, explain it, uh, put it into words 100% well, but uh, it's in the Bible too. Christ, would, it was, uh, it's, you know, he uh, signified the importance of breaking bread and eating uh, with your humans. Uh, whether you're poor, whether you're rich, uh, whether you're short, whether you're tall, whether you're fat, whether you're small, uh, we all eat, uh, we're all in this together. The, the earth is a big boat and we're all on it together. And breaking bread and eating with your fellow humans, uh, it really uh, reminds you of that fact, in my opinion. All right, uh, so we haven't even had the, uh, the, uh, the live follow on the whole class. Can you believe that? All right, <sighs> so that was a good point about breaking bread, man. If, you got, you know, if you're not following me now, follow me now. And, and everything on social media, go to the website right now because I said that story about bread and I deserve it. All right, uh, so the Willamette Valley is where... Very nice, Jay. Thank you, thank you, Mrs. Jay. Uh, the Willamette Valley is the area that I'm talking about right now. And the Willamette Valley... Uh, that's where you have 70%, 70 to 80% of the entire state of Portland live in the Willamette Valley. When I told you about that job, when I was registering people to vote all around Oregon, it was generally in the vicinity of the Willamette Valley. Uh, you have Portland, Oregon. You have Milwaukee, Oregon. Uh, you guys know those Milwaukee radios and that Milwaukee uh, tool manufacturers. Milwaukee, Oregon. Uh, Brownsville, Oregon, which is known as... Uh, no, 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 not Brownsville. No, no, no. <laughs> Burritosville. Burritoville. <laughs> there, there's a lot. Of, I didn't make that name up. That's what they call it. And it's a strong Latino population. Uh, no, no, no. Hillsboro. Hillsboro. Hillsburrito is what they call it. Hillsburrito. Because there's a really very strong Latino population. Uh, but I would go to all these different communities and I made many YouTube videos in each of these towns. Uh, with uh, registering me to vote, reg me registering people to vote. I was really good at this job. Um, we were still paid hourly, so I didn't get commission or anything. It's against the law to like, you know, give somebody commission for registering people to vote. Uh, but I was really good at it, and uh, it's something that I have a knack for, you know, talking to people, talking to strangers, and uh, them trusting me. I think some of you might, uh, you know, know that. Or, I mean, know what, what, what uh, can, anyways. Anyways. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I registered people to vote and I did that, uh, in the fall of 2012. I think it was, uh, it was August and September of 2012. I remember I had my, uh, 33rd birthday there, uh, while I was working for that job and they were like all like making a big deal and they went and got some alcohol and I'm like, Hey, drinks, uh, I'll, I'll bring a free beers home for him, you know? But I, I was just, uh, I didn't drink alcohol and I, I was... Uh, I, I was doing really well with uh, making YouTube videos at the time. I did a lot of animations and montage videos at that time. So I really was enjoying that too. All right, but uh, enough about me and that job. There's, there's a lot more about Oregon. So um, the, you'd think the largest university in Oregon is the University of Oregon, but that's not actually the case. It's not even the oldest university. Uh, the University of Oregon is the most popular university. It's located in Eugene, Oregon. Uh, Eugene, Oregon is known as Portland Light, you know, because it's a lot like Portland, except not as crazy, I guess. Uh, but that's the University of Oregon. Uh, the, the largest school of the state is actually Oregon State University, uh, which is in Corvallis, Oregon. Uh, generally, uh, yes, Portland's one of the most liberal uh, democratic cities in the United States. 
But the state uh, of Oregon, everywhere else, it's generally very conservative. Uh, the area in southern Oregon, uh, there's a large group of separatists there that want to start a country called Jefferson. And uh, a lot of them claim to not be part of the United States as well. That's in southern Oregon. You can look that up, too. Uh, they, they had a, a big um, separatist thing uh, with the police at, at one point. Um, eastern Oregon is the poorest part. Uh, in the entire eastern part of the state, there's only 200,000 people. Uh, but like I said, Corvallis, Oregon, uh, Oregon State University, it's actually a very uh, popular agricultural school. Uh, what's it's like Texas A&M, uh, it, it uh, attracts a very conservative uh, population. And it's also, you know, you want to have uh, best of both worlds, right? So the University of Texas in Austin, where I went to school, uh, that has a very high uh, liberal population, right? Um, Texas A&M, you know, if you're conservative, you're probably more likely to go there. Uh, similar with Oregon, if you're generally a you know, democratic liberal, you're you know, probably going to go to University of Oregon. And if you're an agricultural conservative from a small town, you're probably going to go to Corvallis and go to Oregon State. Oregon State actually has more students. Uh, there's 28,000 students at Oregon State and only 24,000 students at uh, the University of Oregon. Also, uh, the University of Oregon is not as old as Oregon State. Oregon State, the Beavers, um, they are uh, one of the, they're the oldest school in the um, state of Oregon. Um, established in uh, 1868. Uh, the University of Oregon didn't come around for 12, uh, eight years later in 1876. Another school, really Dr. big school Said is Mount Hood. Wasn't the founder of the school called Harry Beaver? Uh, no, th there's just a lot of beavers in, uh, in Oregon. So, uh, <clears throat> uh, but yeah, um, there's a lot of hairy beavers in Oregon. Uh, some other animals that you might find in Oregon. Yeah. Uh, the, the state bird is the western meadowlark <laughs> class. <clears throat> the, uh, the, uh, okay, now you got me, uh, the uh, state bird is the western meadow lark. Uh, the state flower is the Oregon grape. Elise fly. Really Set. nice yellow dance grape. Game, dance game, dance game, dance game, dance game, dance game. So this is the Oregon grape. Uh, it's like a grape except it's yellow. That's a state uh, flower. Uh, the state animal is beaver. Uh, there also are wolves and coyotes there, uh, which are, you know, Leon. both canines, Set. but totally different. Is that right? uh, um, I'm not really sure. Let's ask Google. Hey, Google, is the Oregon grape edible? Adam underscore Smith underscore 666. On the website, verywellhealth.com, they say, hey, hey, is the fruit of the hey, Oregon hey. grape plant edible? Yes. The berries are edible, but they taste nothing like grapes. Elite soul fly said, you are one sick puppy, Mr. G. Leon. Said, so, they're That's edible? Still me so, though. But they don't taste like grapes. Okay, continuing on, um, there's one other school that I want to mention, and that's Mount Hood Community College. Uh, Mount Hood Community College is one of the largest community colleges in the United States. So, uh, hey Google, uh, like I can, I can tell you, Mount Hood's one of the largest, um, uh, under, uh, largest community Sorry, colleges. I didn't understand. Hey Google, uh, tell me about Mount Hood Community College. According to Wikipedia, Mount Hood Community College is a public community college in Gresham, Oregon, United States, named after Mount Hood. Okay, so I used to live in Gresham, Oregon. Uh, hey Google, how many students go to Mount Hood Community College? In 2010, there were 32,433 students wow. enrolled in Mount Hood Community College. Can you believe that class? There's 32,000 students at Mount Hood Community College. So Portland, Oregon has a lot of college graduates, but get this, there's 32,000 students at the community college. There's not even 30,000 students at the University of Oregon or at Oregon State University. So what does that tell you, class? Well, there is a lot of educated people there, um, but a lot of them uh, have uh, degrees from smaller community colleges and trade school and, and correspondence schools as well. So. Uh, and you see that a lot. You see the same thing in Seattle, which we're going to be studying about on Friday. 
They do have big schools there. The University of Washington is one of the public Ivy schools, just like the University of Texas. But um, there's also a lot of little They're individual the schools, schools as well. School 666 said, M-R-G-L-I-V-G-K-Z, well. So the most educated parts of the United States, they don't just have like uh, really... Uh, they don't just have uh, one big university. Like in Hawaii, Hawaii is one of the least educated parts of the United States, and they don't have small schools, really. They have a few schools, but that's it. Um, you know, that's because uh, education, you want to see it as a big, as a whole. You want to see things, uh, you want to see the big picture, not just uh, see things narrow-minded. All right, uh, so the state bird of Oregon is the yellow meadowlark. The state tree is the Douglas fir. Uh, the state fish is the Chinook salmon, and uh, yeah, uh, what else? Um, it's the ninth biggest state in the United States area-wise, so um, it's pretty small. This population is only 4 million. There's a lot of open spaces, uh, but it is in the top 10 uh, area-wise. Um, you know, Portland being the largest city, uh, about 2.5 million uh, people metro area. Uh, a nickname for Portland is Rip City. Um, the largest bookstore in the uh, United States, maybe the world, is uh, Powell's Books, located in downtown Portland. Uh, during this time that I mentioned, uh, me and Michael hey, would walk by uh, Powell's Bookstore over and over. Elements, uh, Rip Rip City, elements, uh, you hear that a lot with the basketball. Uh, the only professional sports team in the whole state of Oregon is the Portland Trailblazers. They don't have a professional basketball. I mean, they don't have a professional football team. They don't have a professional baseball team. That's it. They have a soccer team, a popular soccer team. But out of the major sports, the Portland Trailblazers, uh, they're really popular there, and they're popular among people that you wouldn't uh, really consider to be sports fans. This right here is the Portland Trailblazers logo. It does. It is cut off right there, uh, but there is actually some symbolism behind this logo. Uh, the five red lines and the five white lines, uh, they signify uh, two different basketball teams playing each other. And the curved line uh, represents the speed and agility of the game of basketball. So you see that symbol all around Portland. It's a really cool looking symbol, I think. And uh, it's, a, it's, a sig it's the Portland Trailblazers logo. Uh, but there also is some thought and uh, some art behind it as well. Uh, like I said, we mentioned during the class, the state of Oregon uh, has some of the most uh, largest art museums and uh, concentrated concentrations of artists. Uh, there's lots of art, music, theater, coffee shops, microbreweries. Uh, there's nice bridges, nice rivers. It's very scenic. Um, like I said, I did live in that area for um, over a year. Uh, I can't stand the winters. They have the longest winters that you would ever have see. Uh, the winters are brutal there. It's like 10 months of cold rain. And that's not something um, that's, that's for me. So a lot of people, uh, so there you have Oregon on the map right there. Uh, it's known to have a really good coastline. When you mention Oregon to a lot of people, uh, they'll mention the Oregon Trail. So I'll go ahead and show a map of the Boss. Oregon Trail. Set. Uh, the Oregon Trail, uh, it's a famous trail, and there's still remnants of it in um, Eastern Oregon, the poorest part of the state. Uh, but it started in Independence, Missouri, as you can see on the map right there. And then it goes, or the map right here. And then it goes all the way uh, to the Oregon, the Oregon Trail. So, uh, yeah, if you look closely, you can see Independence, Missouri, all the way to uh, Oregon. So what else? Uh, I mentioned Burgerville, I mentioned uh, Voodoo Donuts, I mentioned uh, Forest Park. Um, I mentioned the state bird is the yellow meadowlark, the state uh, flowers, the Oregon grape. Uh, this is the state flag of Oregon. Uh, fun fact about the state flag, it actually has two uh, designs. Uh, it has one design on the left side and one design on the right side. Uh, let's go ahead and see if Google uh, can explain it a little better. Hey Google, tell me about the state flag of Oregon. According to Wikipedia, the flag of the state of Oregon is a two-sided flag in navy blue and gold with an optional gold fringe. On the front is the escutcheon from the state seal and on the reverse is a gold figure of a beaver, the state animal. Oregon is the only U.S. state to feature different designs on either side of its flag. 
Oh, okay. So that's interesting. So you can see it all right there. And uh, it's a very, uh, very nice thing. So guys, uh, if you want an update on the class, we have classes Monday, Wednesday, Friday, but log on to the uh, Instagram, the official classroom Instagram. If you want to know what we're going to be learning about, uh, what time the next class is. Generally, it's always around the same time, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Uh, but this at uh, the bottom, uh, even if you don't like cats, well, if you don't like cats, you probably shouldn't be in my class. But um, this is where you go uh, for notices of the next upcoming class. Uh, which reminds me, uh, we're missing Countryman today. Uh, he's generally a really good help, uh, but he is uh, not here uh, today, but that's fine. Uh, today's the last day of the month. Uh, we started off this month on March 1st learning about uh, Maine. Uh, we had a really good class about Maine. Uh, and then a week later, on the 8th, we learned about Pennsylvania. Um, we also learned about Michigan. Detroit, Michigan. A week hey, Detroit, so, Michigan. Hello. Did you, did you, right before, right as I was saying Michigan, it said Detroit, Michigan. Can you believe that? As I was saying the word Michigan, uh, we did Michigan on uh, March 15th. We did Michigan. No, I'm not going to, that's a taste, tasteless joke. Okay. Uh, on Monday the 15th, uh, Detroit, yeah, Michigan, do we, have left? we shouted you out uh, on that day. Uh, you missed that class, but it's available on YouTube. All of these classes Detroit, are available Michigan, on YouTube. Said the timing long. I know, right? All of these classes are available on YouTube, so if you missed your own class, uh, like Detroit, missed Michigan, uh, you can, or you missed your own state, uh, you can go into YouTube and check your own state. Um, we did Indiana last Friday, or no, country two Fridays man. ago. Says, I took the all last no week Jean, off. What's up, brother? Just got home. Hey, countryman, just talking about you. Said, the new merch is here, Pog Champ, check it out. HTTPS, so, um, yeah, slash what, Mrs. Mrs. J asked what, what states we have left. Well, on Friday, the we're going to do Washington, it's the state said, of Washington. Hello, it's MRSJ, the mermaid. And then uh, next week, we're going to do the three the most populous states. Said, Hi there, countryman. MRSJ the mermaid said. Which are Hi there, Detroit, which are California, Texas, and Florida. So said, Monday, Wednesday, Friday next week, man. we yeah, have uh, Texas, Friday's Florida, and California. Um, and then the week after that, we have Hawaii and Alaska. So we only have five states left, Mrs. J. Countryman. Uh, we have Texas, said, Florida, and California, Alaska, and Hawaii. And maybe we can do Washington, D.C. and Puerto Rico. I don't know. But there'll probably be states. You know that Biden. <laughs> no, he better legalize weed, too. No, seriously. Um, so I, I didn't mention the oldest living organism. This is off key. I'll pivot. So no, the oldest living organism in the world is actually yeah. located in Oregon. Set. It's we the largest living organism on Earth as well. And Earth is the only place that the majority of us have, have been. You know, a few of us, you know, we may have been elsewhere, but on this planet, the largest organism, and, and that does come up, you know, around alien, you know, conversations, you know, around the, you know, Star Wars bar and everything, you know, when aliens are drinking their moonshine and shooting the shit, um, you know, it comes up, they're like, oh, what's the largest organism on Earth? Well, the largest organism on Earth is a fun guy. It's also the oldest organism on Earth. Yes. It's the largest and oldest Country organism man. on Earth. Said, hey, Mrs. J, hope you're well too. And yeah, it's a mycelium. They say it's even larger. G, they say that mycelium could be as large as 1,000 miles. Wow. So Country here's man. a picture of it right Said, here. They say it stretches from Cali to Washington. Let's see what um, uh, uh, Google says about it. Um, hey, Google, what's the oldest living organism on Earth? Here's what I understood from the website bbc.com, a great basin bristlecone pine tree in California's White Mountains named hey, Google. Bussola, comes in a... What's the oldest uh, mushrooms on Earth? <laughs> Country man said, I don't think it's the oldest, On the website the dailymail.co.uk, they say, Old Mold, world's oldest mushroom discovered in the Congo is 810 million years old. Hey, Google. May have helped make... I'm teaching a class. Can you give me the answer that looks like I know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I'm there. No. Hey, Google. Uh, what's the Country large man. mushrooms said. in Oregon? Largest. Country man said. Not all this. Sorry. Adam I don't have any information Smith about that. 666 said. L-U-L. Okay, class. You're going to have to take my word for it. But 
Once again, follow me on Instagram. My name is Mr. G. Follow me on Twitter, really. And uh, at Gregory Brandt. Also, the website is at gxnetwork.live. Uh, what else uh, can we cover here? So the mushrooms, uh, I don't have the name. Uh, Countryman, you mentioned something like that. Uh, Countryman, have you ever had a Burgerville burger? They're pretty good. Um, but yeah, uh, what else? Uh, we mentioned Mount Hood being at one of the largest community colleges in the United States. Uh, here's an outside of a Burgerville. I, I once left something at a Burgerville and, you know, you're not supposed to regret things in life. The past is Hot like balls. a rear view mirror. Set. You can look for a second and it's okay. But if you look too long, you'll freaking crash your current car, right? So that's why you look at the past. You know, the past is like a rear view mirror. You know, when you're driving along, you know, you know, it's okay to look in the rear view mirror for a second, you know? But if you look too long, you'll crash right off the road. So the past is like a rear view mirror. Don't look too long. All right, um, what else? Uh, Portland, Oregon is the center of Oregon. Uh, it's the uh, where the Columbia and the Willamette Rivers Neon. meet, Set. and it's in the Talking shadow of Mount Hood. Folks. Now, if you Neon. go to Vancouver, uh, you can see Mount Have Hood, been. but you can also see Country in the Mount. distance, we'll learn about Set. it on Friday. Um, yeah, she is the largest, and the craziest part is they still don't know how big it is. They yeah. say it could possibly even stretch into British Columbia in Canada. It's For not, God's sake, that's, that's a big mushroom. Over hundreds of miles away. Mycelium and fungi in general is such an unknown subject. I know, right? What is it thinking about? You know? But, um, some more fun facts about Oregon. Um, the Molten, Oregon, uh, Portland, Oregon is in Multnomah County. Uh, this is the Multnomah County uh, Public Library. It's a famous public library. Uh, it's very nice on the inside, too. I'll show you a bigger picture of it right there. And uh, me and uh, my brother, here's the inside. We spent a lot of time here in this library. Uh, I made a really awesome video uh, called Celebrities That Used To Be Homeless. I think it had like 200,000 views on YouTube. Uh, that was before, you know, uh, I stuck my foot into toxic shit on YouTube. Uh, but yeah, it had a couple hundred thousand views. It was a really popular video on YouTube. And I made it in that library uh, on those seats right there. Um, and I was really proud of it too. And the reason I did so is because I was reading uh, all these articles about famous people that used to be homeless, you know? And so I'm like, wow, nobody's made a YouTube video like this. You know? That's cool. So I made a YouTube video, Celebrities That Used To Be Homeless, part one and part two, because there was hundreds of them. You wouldn't believe it. Uh, James Bond used to sleep on a park bench. Um, who else? Uh, Carmen Electra. Uh, uh, Jennifer Lopez used to live in a homeless shelter. Um, it, the list goes on and on. It was a video I was really deeply uh, proud of. And I put like Phil Collins music in the background and everything. And like I said, it had a lot of views, like hundreds of thousands of views. Um, you guys are aware I did have a YouTube channel before those toxic incels came to Hawaii that had millions of views, right? A lot of people don't know that, but a few days before they got here, it, that channel suddenly disappeared. So I'm still working in the legalities to get that channel back, my original YouTube channel. So uh, continuing on. Um, so yeah, there's a very nice uh, library system in Portland, Oregon. Uh, you know, there are high taxes in those areas, but um, there are some good things about liberal cities. You know, you hear, uh, I listen to AM radio a lot, and you hear a lot of bad things about Democratic-run cities. Uh, but Democratic-run cities do generally have good hospitals. Um, their uh, their homeless aren't like starving on the street, and also they have good social services and good public libraries as well. And that's always been a really big thing for me because I've never begged in my life. I've never asked for a handout. But the times that I've been down and out and down on my luck, and I had to pull myself up on my mother effing bootstraps, I always had the public library. I always had the availability to go to a library to get a drink of water, to sit, get out of the cold, get out of the heat, sit down, collect my thoughts in a peaceful, safe environment, and make my next move. Make my next move. It's a, it was a, so many times in my life, I found myself in a public library, whether it was in Portland, Oregon, or Vancouver, Washington, or Austin, Texas, or Honolulu, Hawaii. And I, I maybe didn't have money, didn't have something going, didn't have anything, but make my next move. What's my next move? You know. You have a bathroom to use, you have water, so, you know, I really, uh, 
really like that. And uh, libraries weren't always free. Uh, at the start of the country, libraries were something that was only for the rich. Uh, it wasn't until uh, the great uh, philanthropist, uh, whose name slips me... Adam uh, underscore Smith underscore 666 said, Library gang. <laughs> Library gang. But, uh, but yeah, the great philanthropist... Uh, I can't think of his name right now. Anyways, uh, about more about... Um, uh, about a couple more things about Portland. Uh, Hell's Canyon is the deepest canyon in the United States. It was formed by the Snake River. Uh, the Snake River actually forms the boundary uh, between Oregon and Idaho to its east. So the shape of Oregon, it's pretty interesting. Um, the border on the east with Idaho is the Snake River, where you can also find uh, the canyon there, the old, uh, Hell's Canyon, the oldest canyon in the United States. And up on the top, the northern border between uh, Washington, the state of Washington and the state of Oregon, the Oregon-Washington border, is the massive Columbia River, uh, which has to be a couple miles across. It's a huge river. Uh, the name Oregon, nobody knows exactly where it comes from, uh, but there's a French name, uh, Oregon, which means hurricane. Uh, so some people assume when the early settlers and the first... Uh, and uh, uh, the first European settlers saw the massage Columbia River, the gorge, as they call it. Um, they, uh, they, they called it uh, Oregon. But there's not an evidence of that. Speaking of the gorge, um, one of the most famous uh, concert sites, it's not called the gorge. It's called like Rock. I forget what it's called, but it's in that area of Oregon. Uh, and some of the most famous arts. It has some of the best acoustics in the world. And uh, is it called the Gorge? I don't know. It may be called the Gorge. You know what I'm talking about, Countryman or Mrs. J? Uh, but there's a huge rock venue in Oregon. Maybe Google will know. Hey, Google, what's the name of the huge uh, outdoor rock venue in the state of Oregon? Sorry, I don't have any information. Yeah, because you don't. All right, well, uh, Google doesn't know. But... Um, I lived in uh, Vancouver, Washington, which is right on the other side of the Columbia River. Uh, the Columbia River is the huge, massive river where Oregon maybe gets its name. Uh, but Vancouver, uh, it's known as Vantucky. Uh, one of the reasons, Vancouver is a really conservative area, and it's nothing like uh, the Portland metro area, even though it's part of the Portland metro area. One reason for that is because uh, Portland has an award-winning uh, public transportation system called the MAX. Um, I actually met a... Uh, a murderer on the max who who uh, offered to murder me uh, I politely declined uh, but unfortunately a couple years later on the max this same individual uh, sliced up some people and, uh, uh, and and one of them was a hero that was protecting uh, the original uh, woman that he attacked uh, and she was a, a Muslim uh, woman it was a, a, a an Islamophobic hate crime um, I met this individual while I was uh, registering people to vote, and I, I was uh, very risky because I should have walked away immediately. Uh, you know, going up to register people, like, hey, can I register to vote? Can I register to vote? No? Okay, no? Yes? No? Okay. But this person, I, did, I kept on because I, I asked him, hey, can I register to vote? And he went right up to me with murder in his eyes. And, and I'm just like, whoa, that's uncalled for with my little clipboard and everything. But he was a real short guy, and... I wasn't I felt threatened by him, and and uh, he's like, oh, you're one of those liberal blah blah blah, and he starts saying that because most of the people that and the people that I worked for were all liberal, and everybody was liberal, but I, I wasn't independent, nothing, you know, but um, but I'm like, no, I'm from Texas, I'm a Republican, and then he's like, oh, like something like I could kill you or something, but I didn't think he was actually serious. Uh, then a couple years later, I, I just hear a news story about this guy. And I have a really good memory. I won't forget a face. And I remember this guy and the murder size he had and the dorky haircut too. And he unfortunately took two people's lives on uh, the uh, Max train. So, uh, so yeah. And I would ride the train every day. I would see, you know, sometimes you would see the same people at the same stops every day. Uh, part of this job, they would give you a daily uh, train pass, a Max day pass. Uh, which is like five dollars and that gives you uh you know uh transportation all around uh the willamette uh, metro area so that means you know they could they would give me a day pass and send me to hillsborough for the day 
or send me to Milwaukee, Oregon for the day, and then I would register people to vote. So I was in and off that max, and, and their train is so good. I could be working uh, in Hillsboro, and then I'll be like, hey, man, I really want to go to that taco stand in downtown Portland. Oh, okay, so just jump on the train. It goes like 80, 90 miles per hour. So even though I'm, uh, you know, 40 miles away, 20 miles away, boom, I'm there in 10 minutes, you know, at my favorite taco stand for lunch. Oh, that's one thing, Portland, uh, that's where the, uh, the portable food stand started in Portland. Mar SJ the Mermaid said, that's cool to use the high speed train. Yeah. Um, I mean, the, uh, the, what are those called? The food carts. Food carts started. There's a place in Portland uh, that are huge with food carts. And, uh, you know, that, that's where I'm talking about where I would go if I was working in some other part of the uh, state. And then I would go uh, want to get something to eat or something. And I could take the train uh, all the way over there. So it was really cool. <clears throat> but, yeah, um, oh, that's another thing. Uh, you know, from Vancouver, Washington, a very conservative uh, city, uh, they didn't have any public transportation. It was very hard to get around in Vancouver, uh, but Portland, Oregon, being a very democratic city, they have many public transportations off, public transportation services available, and a lot of them are inexpensive because uh, they do realize that there is a, a, a law, a large, uh, they do, they do, uh, uh, have empathy for the uh, fi most uh, in need. All right, so what else about the state of Oregon? They have a really good zoo. Um, there's a place called Boring, Oregon, that a car broke down in. Uh, there's also Dole, Oregon. Every year there's a Dole and Boring Festival in Oregon. It's called the Dole and Boring Festival. Um, we talked about the oldest living organism. Uh, there's a lot of uh, hippies, uh, hipsters, uh, skinny jeans, coffee shops, anarchists, riots, fire. Uh, Portland has always been a uh, just a hot spot of political activity, and it goes back uh, decades. Uh, it's not something that's uh, that just started. Uh, so it's always been weird. Uh, you know, there's a leprechaun colony in Portland, Oregon. It's the only leprechaun colony uh, west of Ireland. All right, so I'll end it on that note. On the leprechaun. I want you on the chair. All right, everybody. Don't forget to uh, smile and uh, eat a Happy Meal if you get a chance. Uh, hey, Google, uh, volume two. So uh, we talked about Nike, right? <laughs> All right, this is a fun class. Okay, Pete slept through the whole thing, but it's okay. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Um, thank you for coming, especially Countryman, Mrs. J, and Bella, too. Uh, Bella, I, I, mentioned, I mentioned you in yesterday's prayer, um, and, 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 uh, and anybody that I forget. Uh, Countryman. Hey, Google, volume said, two. I do know that Clovis people existed all along the western coast of the U.S., Canada, and Mexico. Hey, Google, play, play Hundreds Hayden. Thousands of years before the Bering Strait was its thin strip and the Native Americans we know today crossed. Hey, Google, volume four. Uh, one more thing about Oregon is uh, that's where I had my last newspaper delivery. Uh, I delivered the Oregonian newspaper while I lived man. in Vancouver, Set. Washington. Speaking of ancient to humans, I will send you some information for your Californian presentation, G. Hey, Google, volume four. So, uh, hey, Google, play volume five. Uh, so, yeah, um, I actually delivered the Oregonian newspaper. Uh, with this jackass liar piece of shit that's probably in jail, and he never paid me. I, I worked for him every day, every night. I because I've had five different newspaper routes in my my life. No, no more. Newspaper's dead. Sounds like it's raining. But uh, this guy never paid me. I think his name was Zach, or he was a piece of shit, a fucking drunk driving asshole. But everybody that I met in Vancouver, Van Tucky, was garbage, dude. They were all horrible people. Said, Some of the very the worst people I ever met were in Van Tucky. You know, it, I, I told you it was, it was the time that Barack Obama was running for election, re-election. And I remember having a conversation with this. I, he was one of the only nice kids in the area. There was a real creepy kid that lived down the street. 
but there was a nice kid too that was like homeschooled. But uh, he uh, he told me, uh, "Why are you gonna vote for Obama? He wasn't even born in this country." I'm like, "He was born in Hawaii." He's like, "Okay, well, well, Hawaii wasn't even a state. Probably wasn't even a state when he was born." And I'm like, "Don't you think they looked that up?" Like some of the creepiest, the very worst human being I ever met was this punk fucking kid in Vancouver, Washington, who was very mean to a cat named Peach. It's where Peach gets her name. Hey, Peach. Hey, Bot. Said, help Mr. G with a donation through stream elements, https colon slash slash stream elements dot com slash mrg underscore live slash tip. So the country man said, interesting fact, well, so the very the very worst people I ever met were in Vancouver, Washington. Said, Peachy Pie, the sweetie pie. Hmm. And yeah. Got Country this. man said, "What an asshole, though, for real." Yeah, Peach ended up dying too. Not you, Peach, the first Peach. But yeah, um, they were the meanest people, and I can't believe. Uh, I stayed there as long as I did. I ended up just leaving with nothing but the sh clothes on my back. It was out in the middle of the country. It was a miles from the closest store. And it was horrible. It was one of the worst fucking places I ever lived. Vantucky. You want to read about it in my second book. There's a chapter called Vantucky. And it's all how horrible these people are. Once again, my second book has been coming out early next year. I'm going to be working on it a lot uh, this year. And it'll be ready uh, early next year. Stream Elements said, yeah, yeah. Can you like just hear podcast? Check it out. HTTPS colon slash slash merch dot stream elements dot com slash mrg underscore live. All right, so we're gonna take a quick prayer. Said, Nice. Maybe wine still read, but too long. In the name of Father and Son and the Holy Spirit, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Dear God, thank you for this class that you've been able to give me. Thank you for this opportunity to teach this class. Uh, thank you for the wonderful people in the class, in this community. People like Mrs. J, Big Block, Super Roofer, Bella, Countryman, Mr. Nicotino, Cody, and anybody else I'm forgetting. Thank you for everybody that helps take care of the kitties, like Irene. Uh, please watch over me and all the outside kitties and all the inside kitties. Uh, please help me continue to make money in the stock market. Uh, please help me continue to grow my community. And thank you for everything you've given me. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for the opportunity to fight for on the side of good. And I won't ever forget that why I'm here to be good and to defend the defenseless. And thank you for this opportunity to do so. And I'm not going to let you down. And the more responsibility you give me, the larger you make my community. The more I will pray, the more I will remind myself why I'm here. So once again, thank you, God, and, and please help us and watch over and protect us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thank you, God, for everything you've given me. Special shout out to Maze, Genesis, and and Maya, thank you for everything. And Lita, thank you for everything you've given us. Your Father and Son and Holy Spirit. All right, guys. For me and Peachy, we'll talk to you guys later. Country man said, mm, no, oh, you're Pink's like the bear. Said, thank you, Mr. G, for another great lesson today. Love to all the kitties. Oh, welcome, what you do. I love you too. Kissy for you. All right, guys. Everybody, uh, have a wonderful Wednesday, and uh, join us on Friday when we're going to have a great lesson on uh, Washington as well. Plus, we're going to have a special guest. Uh, JR is going to come to us uh, via Zoom. It's going to look a little different. We're not going to use the Mevo uh, for Friday's class. We will have class same in the classroom, same time. But I'm going to set it up a little different so we can uh, incorporate the... Uh, uh, Mr. JR. All right, everybody, thank you very much. It was a wonderful class, and I appreciate all of you. Once again, uh, thanks everybody for meeting here, taking time out of your own day 
uh, to come say hi and uh, fuck all those pedo losers. And uh, you guys are with me and that's what's important. Um, everybody uh, have a nice day and I'll talk to you guys later. Aloha. Oh, I'll also probably be live again uh, with my nice gaming system. It seems like that kid really hates my gaming system, right? He, like he does this every day. Bye, everybody. Have a good day. Aloha.